It is March of 2024 and both TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale have deprecated having built-in MinIO or S3 object storage emulation that allows you to use your TrueNAS server as an S3 storage device but they have moved it to being an application. This is why they deprecated it because applications are easier to update than updating the TrueNAS appliance itself. So this was done for security reasons. When they first did it, there were some bugs, I will admit to have complained about that have now been addressed where certificates weren't working properly. Now that all this has been fixed, let's get started and show you how to set it up in TrueNAS scale. <music> Are you an individual or forward-thinking company looking for expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Perhaps you're an internal IT team seeking help to proactively manage, monitor, or secure your systems. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific project needs. Whether you require fully managed or co-managed IT services, our experienced team is ready to step in and help. We specialize in supporting businesses that need IT administration or IT teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. To learn more about any of our services, head over to our website and fill out the Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com. Let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store and affiliate links down below that will lead you to discounts and deals for products and services we discuss on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you really came here for. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is certificates because we got to go here to credentials and certificates. And I created a certificate authority called MinIO. And then I created a certificate called MinIO. These are just self-signed certificates. If you wanted to have a signed certificate, there are options here under the Acme DNS. You can use Cloudflare, Route 53, OVH, or your own shell script to do this. Diving in further to this is out of scope, so is a reverse proxy. Those are other options you can have for this, but you can put certificates in here. I'm simply gonna go the self-signed certificate route. And as I said, it's as simple as adding the authority, follow the questions, and then go ahead and add the certificate here. You can just use the TrueNAS default certificate. That is an option. I just prefer to have a dedicated certificate for the MinIO. Next, we wanna go over to our data sets and I'm gonna create it here on this particular pool called SSDC. So let's go ahead and add a data set. We're gonna call that data set MinIO YouTube Demo. I'll just give it the same comment. We'll leave everything here at default and then scroll down here. We wanna change the share type to application. That's important because this is going to be dedicated to the S3 app and this will set the permissions automatically. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save here. Now we can go over to the applications, go to discover apps, type in MIN, and you'll find the MinIO high performance native object storage. Go ahead and choose install. And we'll give it a name demo. You can have more than one. So if you wanted this dedicated to the first demo and call it demo one, another demo and call it demo two, or maybe more aptly calling it something like Synology, you can have an instance provided you don't reuse the ports for each one, but we're just gonna call this one demo because we're only gonna do one instance for this demonstration here. We'll scroll down, leave these things all at default. And now we have to set a root password and root user. We'll give it the name bucket list and we'll use this as our password. Then we're gonna scroll down a little further. We're gonna leave these at default because it's the only instance I have, but these can be changed to something different you want. And here is our TrueNAS default certificate, but I'm gonna choose the Mint IO certificate. And then we're gonna scroll down further. And we're gonna enable host path volume. And we're gonna choose that particular pool and this Mint IO YouTube demo as the data set. And we'll scroll down here at the bottom and simply click install. All right, now the application is up to date. We're gonna go ahead and click on the web portal and use the credentials that we put in. And we're gonna go ahead and create a bucket. And we'll call this bucket XCP and G because that's what I'm gonna use as a test. I'm not gonna worry about any of the other functions in here, but we'll go ahead and create a bucket. And while we're here is I want to do another test with Synology. So we'll create a bucket for Synology. And 
And now we have two buckets here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through all the functions here because you can find this all in the documentation of min.io and all the extra features you can do. I just wanted to get the basics covered here to get you this far, but you can create specific access keys and get granular with permissions. That's all built in here as well. Now I'm gonna go over here to my demo system and just show you that it works. We're gonna go ahead and create an Amazon Web Services S3. We'll give it the name S3 YouTube Demo. We'll scroll down here. We gotta give it an endpoint. I'm doing this by IP address. So this is the IP address of the ChurnAS server and colon 9000 is the port. That's the default port set up for the MinIO instance. And we're going to head and allow an unauthorized certificate so we don't get an error. The bucket name we created was XCPNG. The directory I want this in is just going to be called backups. The access ID, I didn't create a new one. So I'm just going to use the credentials we created for MinIO, which was bucket list and this password. And we can hit save configuration. We can see that it's green and then we can do the test remote and it appears to be working correctly. It is able to write to this. So now I'm able to use these backups. This works much the same with Synology. We're gonna go here to hit plus, go ahead and do next, choose S3 storage. We wanna change it to custom server URL. The server address is gonna be the same. For Synology, we put an HTTPS in front of that. We want to choose version v4 access key is bucket list the secret is that same password and when we hit the pull downs there's our xcpng and synology buckets we want to choose the synology one and you can call this whatever you want go ahead and hit next and we can choose what we want to back up on this particular system give the task a name next i like the smart recycle option go ahead and hit next done Say yes, and you can see now our Synology is backing up. All right, our Synology has successfully done the backup, and we can go back over to MinIO and see the reported usage, or we can go to our object browser and see the different objects in this particular bucket. I didn't run a XCPNG backup, so there's still no objects in there, but this pretty much gives you an idea how you can use this. Now, one more thing I want to note over here in our TrueNAS, if we go to data sets and we look at that data set we created, the MinIO YouTube demo data, you'll see it says owner 473 and group 473. This is the user for MinIO. You don't have to do anything or create this user. It's already there, but if you change it, you will break it. Just want to note if you're wondering why that appeared there is it doesn't use the normal apps. It actually creates its own user. Nothing you have to do, just something I wanted to note. Now I did this video using TrueNAS Scale 23.10, but I have tested the beta 24, which is due to be out in about a month from now. And maybe you're watching this in the future when it's already out. The creation process looks the same in the beta. So if the video needs an update, let me know in the comments down below, or maybe I've already got a new video out. Also worth noting, MinIO is really cool. Really nice open source project, has a lot of documentation. I kept it simple by only covering the getting started, but yes, there's a whole lot more you can do with MinIO. Uh, leave some comments down below if there's something else you want me specifically to cover, or maybe just let me know what your use case is for it and what you have tied to your S3 object storage. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics you've seen on the channel, and thanks.